Sorry. I gotta turn this around. There you go. <laughs> Sorry, everybody. Did not rotate. Let me see here. What's going on? Give, give me a second here. It won't let me go sideways now. Oh no. Hold on one second. How do I do this? Yeah, the screen, the screen is locked. I don't understand. Of course it worked before, now it's not working. <laughs> it's like it locked. Do you think I can come out and come back in? Is that okay? No. Let's see, because Nina's here. I'm sorry guys, I know this orientation is not the best. Probably not. Oh no, okay. Well, darn. <laughs> Well, let me figure out how to do my stand now that it's not going to do it this way. Ay, ay, ay. Uh, I'm going to have to move my camera around. Okay, so hold on one second because now if I'm going to do it this way, I have to change the way it's fine on the computer. Oh, okay. So, well, okay. So let me, sorry guys, I'm so sorry. I am trying to figure out how I can make my phone stand up for a second while I run around and change my stand real quick. Okay, give me one second. <laughs> okay, here we go. Oy, 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 oy. There. Whew. Okay. Hi, everyone. <laughs> uh, let's see. I'm going to open this up real quick on my computer. I hope you guys are having a, a good morning. <laughs> and I am going to move this out of the way here for a second, and then we'll get started. So we are, or I'm going to share with you a real, hi, Nina. Hi, Daniel. Oh, thanks. Yeah, thanks. So I'm going to do a really fun uh, ink swiping technique. Uh, it's pretty easy and I think it's really cool. Hi, Tiffany. So I'm gonna just go ahead, hi D, and just change the camera away from my face and down to my work surface so we can get started with it. Because of course, today I have, a, again, a pretty um, long, or a card that's gonna take our whole time to make. It is kind of early. It's only like eight. It's not super early, but um, I will be honest, eight is now early for me. <laughs> since I, since the girls have been doing um, virtual learning, we've been allowed to kind of sleep in and not have to start our morning so early. Okay, so I'm gonna turn it away from my face. Just give me a second here. Look at, I'm all sweaty already. Jeez Louise. Okay, let's figure out how to do this here on um, YouTube. There we go. Okay, all right. So to do this technique, it's really simple. You don't need much. Um, you just need some dye inks. Uh, I prefer to use um, inks that really react well with water, like distress, uh, distress inks or distress oxides, but really just any dye ink is pretty much going to do, uh, give you similar results. But I think these move a little bit better. And then you need an old, a credit card or gift card. I'm using my old Phoenix Zoo card. And you actually don't even need any special paper. You can just use heavyweight cardstock. Uh, of course, you can use watercolor paper or Bristol paper. Those will work as well. But even just plain heavyweight cardstock, which is what I have here, works pretty good. So what we're gonna do is kind of create our own like pattern paper kind of uh, it won't have a similar look but similar in nature to ink smushing where you kind of create this almost distressed or um, textured kind of background but we're going to do a different look it's almost going to look kind of like plaid when it's done and we're doing it to create this pattern you see here on these leaves 
So this is just another really fun technique for um, using your inks, but also getting a different look with them than just maybe ink smushing for, and again, for you can use it for backgrounds or you can use it like what we're gonna use today for die cutting out these leaves. Oh, I just remembered I forgot to get my green for this. So I'll have to stop and get that too at one point. Okay, so let's start. I'm gonna move this to the side. Hopefully we can get everything still on camera. There we go. And I'm gonna smush it down onto my work surface. This is a Twisted Citrine Distress Oxide. And then I'm going to grab my water and just spray it with a little bit of water, just like that. So it's kind of um, pooling up a little bit and it's a little bit more liquidy. You can see how I can move it around here. And I do have my water media mat underneath me, which is a really great surface to work on for this. And I'm, gonna, I'm starting with Twisted Citron because I like to start with my lightest colors first and then work my way through my darker colors. Yeah, this is the only way I get green because, well, I take that back. My husband has much more of a green thumb. I was telling Tiffany before, I've killed so many plants. So I'm gonna make my plants with paper. <laughs> so I just picked up a little bit of that ink. You kind of just pick it up by lifting. You see how I've had like a, a bead of it here or a roll of it here on my um, card. And then you'll turn it over and then just swipe with your gift card to transfer that over. And you can see you don't get exactly the same thing every time, but that's kind of the fun of it. So I like to go horizontally and then I'll go vertically. And I'm more heavy handed with this light color because it'll get eaten up pretty quickly by um, our darker greens. Oops, do I got any more here? And that's pretty much it. So that's our first color. <clears throat> oh, you like green, Nina? I love green. Well, I'm, I like green a lot. Right now my current favorite color is yellow or specifically like mustard. That's my favorite color right now. All right, so this is Mowed Lawn Distress Oxide. Again, just smushed it down. Yeah, this is fun. I can't remember where I, I did not come up with this. Rarely do I come up with something. I will tweak something that I see or just flat out, <laughs> I guess steal, I hate to say steal, but kind of incorporate that technique. But I did not come up with this. It, it's, a pretty, it's pretty cool and easy. And it has a really neat look. Um, there is a really awesome card maker, Hanali on IG. If you haven't been following her, you should. She does this technique a lot. And she she's like a, the master of it now. She just is, she uses it so brilliantly. Okay. And even though, again, this is just regular cardstock, so it's, I'm not using that much water that I'm getting that much warping going on here. And because we're also, you could dry this in between each layer if you want. I'm debating whether I should dry it between the next layer. I think I am. So I'm gonna stop here and just really quickly heat set this. When you heat set it, you're gonna get, your colors are gonna build a little bit better on top of each other. You'll get more contrast. So like the mode lawn will be a little bit darker. And so I think I might do a little bit, I have some here still on my work surface. I'll do a little bit more of the mode lawn. I like to get more contrast. It's getting a little kind of flat in my opinion. So I definitely want more contrast. We do have one more color to go though. Just getting a little bit more. 
And just by going double layers too, you'll get a little bit, or a second layer will get a little bit darker. But it's definitely not, you have to like relinquish some control, which is hard for me with this technique, but it's, you know, you kind of, I think it's just pretty results no matter what you get, really. Okay, so now we're on to our last color. And this is pine needle, so really dark. And let's mix that up. Yeah, I've used these leaves a lot. <laughs> I really like them. I've, I've really um, stretched them and used them a lot lately. I can't help, I just really like the way they look. They're just so pretty. They were designed by JJ. Everything JJ designs is just awesome she's just so she's brilliant she's a comes up with really great designs for card makers i think cool okay i like how that adds a lot whoop i got really all right i'm gonna call that done Hi, thanks for joining. So I just finished that ink swiping. I'm gonna let that kind of sit. I could heat set it. I just don't want to just cause it's kind of noisy for you guys. But I'm gonna let that sit a little bit while we work kind of on the other parts of this card. <clears throat> That's pretty easy to do. I hope this is enough to cut all my leaves. So the, of, like we've already been mentioning, <clears throat> the leaves that I'm using today are these um, gorgeous spring leaves. I've been using them a lot, I love them. We also have fall leaves too that would also look really good done with this technique. You could do this with fall colors, that's the nice thing about this, it could be done any, I mean, you could even do this kind of with rainbow colors, do a pink, a blue, my favorite is peacock feathers, uh, picked raspberry, and mustard seed because those colors, all three of those colors layer on top of each other beautifully and you'd have a rainbow one. I mean, we could even do that real quick. Let's do it real quick. What the heck? We can try that out and just try one more. Just in case anybody missed it and you want to see what we're doing, I'll do one more. I just gotta get find my inks. Okay, so picked raspberry, peacock feathers, and mustard seed. Basically kind of your um, primary colors. And we'll start with mustard seed. This is gonna be kind of rainbow. We're gonna make rainbow leaves now. Or at least rainbow, <laughs> rainbow like plaid. I'm not sure if I'll turn in the leaves or not, but just so you can see the swiping in one more time. Okay, so this is mustard seed. Get that more in the center. So I'm just, if you're just joining again, I mixed Distress Oxide with some water. You could use Distress Ink if you have that instead. And I've got a old credit card or you can use a gift card, it doesn't matter. And I'm picking it up with this, the kind of diluted ink a little bit up with my um, credit card. Kind of just kind of picks up on its own, kind of like sticks to it a little bit. And then I'm gonna just swipe it over my um, panel of heavyweight white cardstock. So not even fancy paper here. Okay. 
clean up here a tiny bit. And then I guess we'll do raspberry. So when raspberry layers on top of um, yellow, it's gonna be kind of orange. I didn't leave enough white for it to stay pink, but we'll see how it goes. Do a little bit more, but it's looking pretty cool. This way. All right, call that done. Look at how they're layering, isn't that cool? You get kind of an orange where the pink goes over the yellow, and then of course it's kind of pink in the white spots. And then the last color is peacock feathers. Of a good technique to get kind of a different kind of background and you can kind of control the the width of your swipes by your pressure if you just kind of keep your pressure to the like kind of angle your card and put your pressure on just kind of one half your swipes will be a little bit smaller but that doesn't mean it's always going to work <laughs> but you can kind of have that a little bit of control that way Oh my gosh, look at that peacock feathers. <gasps> it's so pretty. Oh my gosh. And where peacock feathers layers on top of um, picked raspberry, it becomes kind of purpley. And when it layers on top of the mustard seed, it obviously gets kind of green. So these three colors work really well, well together. They're like my favorite trio. Ah, well, we got some splatters. All right, I'm gonna call that done. So fun, huh? So those are our two ink swiped panels, one with just kind of greens, and then the kind of rainbowy one uh, with a yellow, teal, and pink. And in person, it looks, it has a lot more depth. Here on camera, it looks a little like it's a little muddy in some places, but in real life, I think when it dries, it'll even be kind of crisper, but I really like this one. I think it's really pretty. Love yellow and pink. I love yellow, pink, and um, orange are my favorite uh, combo. I love those colors together. But I'm trying to, trying to get more neutrals. Okay, I just cleaned my mat real quick and let's move on to the next step. And this is dried real nicely. I almost wonder, I'm almost tempted to go back in and add a little, I'm going to. Because <laughs> I don't need this to be dried. I'm gonna add a little bit more of the, I like that contrast where it's really heavy with the pine needles. I'm gonna add a little bit more over here. Just so I have a little bit more contrast because the leaves are kind of small. <clears throat> and like, if I put a leaf over here, it's gonna basically just look green. So if I add a little stripe down there, it'll have a little bit more interest on the leaf itself. See if I can do a little stripe. There we go, that's good. All right, now I'm gonna leave it alone. All right, 
So the next step I want to do is uh, die cut some of my leaves out while that panel is drying a little bit, but I do need to grab green. I'll, gra I'll grab the original card so you can see. So I die cut the outline for these leaves. So all the leaves here have two layers, the base and then an outline to go on top. The base is obviously cut out of the swiped paper. The outline is just green cardstock. So let me grab my green cardstock real quick and we'll die cut that out. And I didn't grab it earlier, of course, I forgot that. Oh, teal, green, and purple, I'll have to try that. What color is that? I'm going through my scraps here. I think I set it aside, and of course I set it aside somewhere where I I hid it for myself. Does this work? Okay, that works. We're gonna use that. I think that's pretty similar, if not the exact same color I used before. So <clears throat> on this card, I did one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight leaves. I did three of this kind. I think three of this kind and three of this kind. So we're gonna die cut those out real quick. <clears throat> Here we go. And I do have to do that three times to get three of those outlines. But it'll go really fast. Look at how pretty those cut. Oh, love these leaves. I'm gonna use a, kind of pop those out. I'm not gonna save any of these negative pieces. I'm gonna put those aside. You could definitely try to save those and work those into another project. I'm just gonna toss them. Do it again. trying to arrange them so I get the most, <laughs> so I don't waste any of my paper. Ah! And everything's falling to the ground. Knocked my ink pad over. There we go. And now we just have one more set to do. And this is not heavyweight cardstock. This is just some, I think it's 65 Recollections green cardstock. I bought this cardstock like a hundred years ago and I'm still working my way through all my kind of, okay, <laughs> uh, cardstock. It's nice to have all the colors. Tetris game, yeah, that's pretty true. I try to get, I try to squeeze them in there and get as much out of my supplies as I can. I'm always thinking that way. Okay, so we got all our outlines cut. Those are all up here. Still got the negatives in, but I'll take take care of those later. Now. This is a little wet still, so I'm gonna heat set this just for a second, and then we'll start die cutting our bases.
Okay, sorry, that took a little longer than I thought. So I'm gonna grab the base leaves. I don't wanna use the outlines this time, so I'm gonna put these guys aside and grab their base kind of counterparts. There we go. Ooh, I think it's gonna be a tight squeeze here to get all of my leaves. Oh no, this is really gonna be Tetris. Let's hope I can do it. <laughs> Might have to throw in some rainbow leaves. You only use recollections for die cutting? Yeah. I, I use the white recollections, um, heavyweight white cardstock. I'll use that sometimes for a base, for a card base. But yeah, look at how pretty those look. Oh, I love them. I love all that pattern and texture on those leaves. Look at them. They look great. Those turned out good. It's almost like you can't tell until you cut it out. Oh boy, I'm so worried I'm not going to get all my leaves cut out. I almost wonder if I should sacrifice the stem there. <laughs> well, we'll sacrifice it if it comes down to it. How about that? Try to cut them all. All right. I just should have gone a little bit bigger. Oh, I'm loving how these look. I love that distress ox or yeah the oxides because they they almost have that for this I really like it has almost that little chalky kind of look finish I think it's just really pretty on these leaves okay last bit I don't think I'm gonna get all my leaves so we'll have to sacrifice some tail ends some stems Maybe, maybe not. OMG. I just might do it. I may have just got them all on there. It can be done. Trying to keep an eye on our time. We're doing really good. All right, I think I got them all cut. It's a miracle. <clears throat> all right, so there's all our leaves. Look at how pretty they are. They're honestly just pretty like this, as is without, with, even without the outline. Aren't those cool? I love them. So now I'm gonna adhere the outline on. So this is just like the little, like gilding the lily a little bit here. Just adding a little bit of detail. And you could really make have more, you had gone with a darker cardstock and made them pop even more. I wanted this part to be subtle. So I went with kind of almost basically a mowed lawn kind of color. Cause I wanted it just to kind of be kind of subtle. Cause I feared if the outline was too dark, you would start to not even see what's going on here in the background. That was what I was fearful of. So I kept it kind of very tone on tone almost. Okay, so what am I using here? I'm gonna glue these together. Oh no, it's not working. I'm glad you found it, wow. It's probably because I screwed it all up when I went and did my camera the wrong way. <laughs> Note to self, don't start with your camera in like landscape. You gotta start with your camera up like profile and then flip it over. That's what I did wrong, so now I know. 
thought I was being good having it all set up beforehand, but ha ha. Okay, so let's glue these. I guess I don't need to kind of organize all of them. I can figure out which goes with it with. It's not that complicated. So I have a, um, there's lots of ways to do these kind of detail um, dies, these thin dies and adhere them onto, um, well, anything, your card base or your, here I'm adhering these obviously onto the die cuts. I'm using liquid glue. I prefer liquid glue. I understand a lot of people wouldn't because it can be a little messy. I'm gonna grab some scrap cardstock here. But I prefer it just because it's more economical. But if you get too much glue, you what I like to do is I just kind of tap it. I have like some scrap cardstock. I'll just kind of wipe it a little bit down and that will remove kind of that excess glue. And that's my preferred way to kind of stick down detail die cuts. There's a bunch of other ways where you use like adhesive, double-sided adhesive. You attach it to your, your cardstock before you run it through with the die. But those are expensive. That's And you have to remember to do that beforehand, which I don't always remember to do. So this is my preferred way. But you definitely do need something with a fine nozzle. That's kind of the key. Oh, he's not gonna work. So I'm just gonna stick these all down, all down. Now you could make a whole background. We're gonna make just kind of like a tight patterned background with these. It, that way we don't have to make as many leaves. Oh, great, she fixed it, awesome. Let me do this on camera here. You also don't have to get glue everywhere. If you just get glue kind of in a couple spots, you're fine. Go a little bit here on the stem. So we made these ink swiped leaves. They're really easy to make with the credit card. And we did two, we did another one with this. See how this is looking now? Isn't that look cool? I love this. This looks very spring to me. Did I really use all of these leaves last time? It just seems like a lot for my little area. And after I put these leaves together, I'll show you how to kind of get this all framed up. Cause I don't know if you can see here that I cut off. So it's all nice and well square or well really rectangle. I'll show you how we do that. That was something I did not understand for the longest time how people did that. Hello from the Netherlands. Isn't that awesome? All the way down here in Arizona. It's raining here today in Arizona or at least well, no, my Alexa said it was raining this morning. That was a surprise. So I'm excited. We're gonna have some weather today. It's the little things. I think this is my favorite leaf. I guess it's a pair of leaves from the, the set. Okay, we're almost done. I take that back, we're halfway there. <laughs> but I think this is the fun part. It's like, what do I describe this as? Um, like the last step where the it gets kind of revealed. This is, I think adding these is that like little, kind of like, oh, every time you glue them down. The liquid glue also gives me a little bit of time to kind of get those in the right spot. All right, just four more to go. Hello from Michigan. There we 
go. Just two more. So if you're just joining, this is the Spring Leaves set. And I die cut the outline out of some green cardstock and now I'm adhering it onto our base leaves that we created where we added color to with an ink, a really easy ink swiping technique. And it kind of creates these almost plaid-like look. <clears throat> Where's my last one? Oh no, there it is. This is the very last one, okay. So the next thing we have to do is kind of arrange them into that rectangle to create that almost framed or panel of patterned leaves. Look at all the texture too. So there is all our leaves. Ta-da, oops. So to create that kind of rectangle, you need a piece of cardstock. I've already, um, you can just cut it with your paper trimmer or die cut it out. I've got to find my rectangle here real quick. So I'm just using a piece of scrap cardstock and you can see it fits, it's the same dimensions as that. And I'm gonna arrange these leaves over this. I'm gonna to refer to this because I spent all that time making this one, getting them in to just the right spot. So I'm gonna do it the same way. Kind of get these organized. Plus I'll go a lot faster if I do it that way. <coughs> Excuse me, wish I grabbed my coffee. Oh my gosh, I think these might even be cooler than these ones. We have a little bit more, um, uh, what's the word? Contrast. Okay, so just getting them over, fitting over. I'm trying to keep the stems out to the side because they're not as interesting. I didn't need all these leaves. I didn't need all of them. Well, better to have too many than not enough. Question is, do I replace this one with this one? I think I do because I like that one better. Since I can be choosy, pick my favorite. And fuss, fuss, fuss. Okay, done. So now I've got them arranged over that. I'm gonna pick them up with a piece of press and seal. Kind of hold everything in place. You could definitely use tape instead. You don't have to use press and seal. This one would work really well with just tape. I gotta make sure I know which side's the sticky side. Okay. Don't move anything. <laughs> and I'm gonna make sure I not only get the leaves, but I also get the um, panel underneath. Cause that's how I'm gonna make sure I cut all these things nice and straight. There. So there we go. Now I'm gonna flip this over. You can see all the overhang here. That's what I'm gonna trim off. So I'm gonna grab my scissors. And I'm gonna not only cut the press and seal, I'm gonna cut right up against the edge of the paper to get all those little bits of overhang of the leaves and everything. Not much overhang, which is nice. So we're not wasting very much. Okay. 
So when I thought of this challenge and this design, I was thinking of St. Patrick's Day. Does anybody, does people celebrate St. Patrick's Day? Do you have anything you do? We usually eat corned beef. I think everybody does, corned beef and cabbage. Okay, there you go, like that. I might even move this guy out a tiny bit more if I can. But our sentiment is gonna be gold because it's the same thing. I was thinking kind of St. Patrick's Day, so I was thinking leprechauns and gold, <laughs> four leaf clovers. There we go. Oh yes, definitely. Thank you, thank you for sharing the challenge. That's why this card is kind of with the challenge in mind, because the challenge this week is um, leaves, and definitely get get in there and enter because we have four uh, gift cards that we're giving away. So, really, really awesome. Uh, all right. So I'm trying to get my head on straight here. What am I trying to do? Okay, so we're gonna add really quick. I'm going to adhere this green cardstock to my card base. Uh, this is lightweight cardstock, so I'm going to use a tape runner. Just kind of put that tape down there. Liquid glue could cause that cardstock to bubble, so that's why I'm not gonna use liquid glue for that. Stick that down, perfect. And now we're ready to kind of add these. So I'm gonna carefully peel the uh, press and seal but away from the panel, but still keep those leaves on. That worked really well. And now I'm gonna add some foam adhesive to the backside, because I don't know if you can tell, there's some dimension here on these leaves. Grab my foam tape and add that real quick and then we'll stick it down. Oh, by the way, the leaf die will be this week's giveaway on Friday. Oh, cool. Is that for the Friday IG Live? Every Friday we do a live on uh, Instagram as well. This is a great die set, it really is. You should see, you should check out some of the, I've made, oh gosh, a lot of cards. I wonder, I should, I should always remember to do this. I should grab some of my previous stuff that I made with products and have those ready to show you guys some of the other things I made with the products. So as you can see the versatility of things, but I made, I actually turned these leaves into a little flower one time. So I just think there's a lot you can do with these leaves for sure. Okay, we're almost done here. All right, so I got my foam tape down. This is the part where it's gonna be a little scary. <laughs> this is why I don't like uh, like tape adhesive or foam adhesive, because I do have almost like only one shot here to get these leaves down right in the center. Did your package finally arrive, Daniel? Ugh, shipping's been so crazy lately. So many delays. Well, I didn't put much foam tape there. I might have one more piece there. Add one more piece there. All right, I'm gonna have to stand up to do this because there's no way I'm gonna get this centered seated. So I'm gonna stand up. You could add liquid glue to the back for a little more time. Oh, I've never done that, Tiffany. That's a good idea. I'm gonna try to, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be really cocky and just try to do it. Let's see. This might be the, the 
the thing that ends me. All right, I think that's good. Okay, I think we did it. And now we can peel off that press and seal everything stuck down. Sort of. Need to glue that down a little bit. Oh no, I lost my needle. <gasps> oh no, I lost, where did I put my needle for my glue? <laughs> I knew this was gonna happen. Oh good, I put it somewhere sort of safe. It's only a matter of time. <laughs> a matter of time till I lose this needle for my glue. The way I'm so careless with it. Someone suggested I need to get a magnet. I was like, that's a really good idea. And then I thought I could put my magnet down here. Oh, okay, 10 minutes after, like 10 minutes after it's posted, oh my. That's a big delay. Okay, doesn't that look pretty already? A little, isn't that such a cool technique to do that? I think I saw Galena do that first. And um, I just think that's so cool. She does that a lot and I think it's such a beautiful technique. Okay, so what I did next is I kind of filled in um, the openings to kind of tighten this and really, you know, uh, frame it or really create like a panel. But first I added some enamel dots before I added all these little marker dots. So let me grab our enamel dots that we're using. So I'm using JJ's rainbow enamel dots just because the green goes really well, I think, with the colors in this. Uh, if you're not familiar with our enamel dots, we have a lot of different ones, all different ones that go with our paper pads. There's so many, there's unicorn, they're uh, botanical. But they're beautiful, I love all the colors and they're all different. Every pack of enamel dots is different. They are the best, they are, they are the best. So I'm gonna just start filling in, I'm not gonna go like crazy, but I'm gonna fill in some of these openings with these enamel dots. Just to add some more texture, because I think if I just did the markers, it'd be a little bit boring. I know, run out. I know, I know. It's hard to use them. These, these, uh, I, this kind of um, product where you like you use it and then it's gone. It, every time I use it, I'm always like, oh no, I'm gonna. The, like once they're down, they're I'm I'm use them, <laughs> and I could run out. I get it, but it, it does add so much to your car design. I just think they really do enhance it. Every time I do it, I'm like, oh, it was the right choice. I'm glad I put those on there. And is that enough? I'm saying that's enough. Have four little ones left over. And now we're gonna add in, now this is the part that gets a little tricky. I'm gonna take a Copic marker and kind of go in and add dots to kind of fill it out. Now this, you could definitely just not even do this, but I do think it helps it a lot. And I can put down a ruler or something like this just to kind of help me see where I need to go when the edge is gone. But really, it doesn't have to be super precise. It's only tricky because it's hard to get in some of these areas with everything down already, but this, I found this is still the best way to do this. Is kind of after you stuck everything down. Otherwise you'd be filling the whole background with dots and that would take forever. <laughs> so this way you're just putting dots around 
the die cuts. I hope that kind of makes sense. And if I angle really hard, I can get down in here around some of these things. Definitely you could just totally skip this step, but I really like how it kind of pulls everything together, kind of really makes that panel. This is a really clever way if you're making, if you're building backgrounds with either stamped images or die cuts kind of like we're doing here, this, adding these dots is just a really great way to kind of complete the pattern. Really fill out and feel like the pattern's encompassing the whole either card front or panel or wherever it is. Thanks, Daniel. I think May did it first. I think I saw May do this first and I was like, that is brilliant. And it actually goes pretty fast. You can even lift up this guy and go around him. And I do still have a sentiment that goes in the center. How are we doing on time? Ooh, cutting it close. Always cut it close. I guess they don't cut me out after an hour. I guess well, we might find out. IG will cut me out. I'll well, just end the video if I go an hour. I bet this doesn't do that. Serene leaves have been ordered. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, I can't wait. Dee is really, really good at layering things. Leaves would be great for that. All right, I'm almost done. Just a little bit more to go. So yeah, it looks like it's really time consuming. I don't think the dots are that I don't think it's that bad, but I can understand if you're like, you look at that and go, heck no, I would never do that. I get it. But I thought it looked good even before. What's that on there? Even before we went the extra mile with the dots. Oh, get in there. Tight squeeze. Sorry if my hand's in the way. I'm trying to keep it out of the way so you can actually see the progression. Now I think we just have this little corner up here. Ooh. I'll do a couple here. All right, there it is. Can I get any in here? So now we just have to finish this with our sentiment. All right. Yes, I find it very relaxing. I do, Susan. Suzanne, let's see, where is my stamp set? Here it is. So I'm using this. Bumped the camera, let me stop that. I'm gonna use this awesome set for my sentiment. I'm just gonna use, just do thank you. I love how scripty and very linear it is. Pull that out. There are matching dies. This is the, I didn't say what it was. This is the sentiment additions set. It coordinates with the bold alpha and wide alpha die set. So you can kind of use these to build like a two-part sentiment. I'm just using this 
standalone, but the, this is an awesome set, especially when combined with alphabet dyes. And Waffle Flower has several awesome waffle, uh, alphabet dyes. All right, let me move this out of the way. I'm gonna stamp it first, so let me grab my Misty. I don't stamp ever now without, a, without my Misty. <laughs> I'm Misty dependent. Grab some card stock. Oh, you love them too? Aren't they great, Daniel? They're awesome. It's nice to have um, scripty uh, sentiments that are linear. You don't see that enough, I feel like. Sometimes they're um, really big, which is nice. It's just nice to have the option of really linear ones. Okay, let's stick it there. Grab the thank you. We're gonna do some real quick gold heat embossing. It's a perfect fit. Pick that up. Apply some anti-static powder. Let's make sure we're in the corner. And then I will ink this up with Versamark ink. Man, I'm so bummed that this is all vertical this time. Oh well, next time I'll be better, I promise. I'll do it one more time, just to make sure I've got a really good impression. So I inked it up a second time. Gonna make sure my paper's in the corner as I bump my camera. Let's press it down. I'm just clearing my camera stand, all right. Now we'll dip it into the gold embossing powder. I have my embossing powder in these little Tupperware things. That was one of the best moves I've ever made for my white, clear, and gold, the ones I use the most. Okay, that looks good. Now I'll heat set this. I'm gonna try to do it away from camera because I'm just afraid it's gonna be too loud, even though it's fun to watch, but I'm afraid it's too loud. There it is, all heat set. And now the best part, we get to die cut it out with the matching dies. Who doesn't love that sound? Heat embossing was the thing that drew me into stamping a hundred billion trillion years ago. Because it's just so cool. Now I gotta find the right one. We're looking for loop de loops, two loop de loops at the top. Here we go, I found it. <laughs> A hand warmer is something I do not need here in Arizona. <laughs> Daniel probably needs that. I do not need that. I need a hand, I need those fans that you have when you go to the bowling alley that you fan your hand off. That's what I need. <laughs> what is the clear film Shannon uses to hold her leaves? It's a press and seal. It's a product that you use for, um, in the kitchen for food storage. It's made by Glad. I'm trying to find some here. It's kind of like Saran Wrap, but different. Press and seal, yeah. Again, you don't have to have press and seal to do that. You could definitely use tape. Uh, I like that press and seal is clear though, so I can kind of see better what I'm, what's going on and what I'm doing. Though, um, like tape like this, micro pore tape is almost transparent. That would work too. Just center that. I'll run that through my die cutting machine. We're on home stretch. Ooh, that is kind of a heat wave. I think we were at 80 something yesterday. It was hot. I was in shorts and a tank top. There 
you go. Look at that. Isn't that awesome? I love die cutting. Ah, perfect. So I want to add a little bit of dimension to this as well. So I'm going to die cut, take this die cut and die cut some craft foam. Now I have a confession. Let me grab my craft foam. I use only one thing to die cut my craft foam. And that is my dinosaur cuddle bug. Does anybody else still have a cuddle bug? Until it hits 150 degrees, yes. You have to have some endurance to be here in the summer. Some serious endurance. So I'm gonna grab some white craft foam. This is, um, you know, stuff that the kids use to craft with. And um, this die cuts beautifully. But my favorite machine for die cutting it is my cuddle bug, which I've had forever, because it doesn't smush the craft foam. I find my other die cutting machines, they smush the craft foam way, way, way too much. And um, then I'm sad because <laughs> I've lost my dimension. So I'm just gonna stick this through. Luckily you can still get cuddle bugs. I think you can still get them on Amazon. There you go. I agree, I'd take the dry heat over the humidity. I would. Because at least when you get in the pool, it really does cool you down. So can you see here, I die cut that um, craft foam out perfectly and just pull it right out of there. And now I have this perfect dimension, like it'll match perfectly with my sentiment. If you didn't, if you couldn't tell already, Waffle Flower is based in Arizona. I'm in Arizona. Nina and um, Sunshine, we're all in Arizona, so <laughs> we. We all have the same weather. This looks, no, I think I'm gonna go with that. I was gonna wipe it off. I think I got a little heavy handed with the glue, but I think it'll be fine. And just put some liquid glue on the craft foam to stick my sentiment down. Now we have this perfect dimensional sentiment. And now I'll just adhere it to my card front. Ta-da! Isn't that what, it like makes it once we add that sentiment, it's like, really the, the it really needed it oh I went six minutes four minutes over well I guess they don't kick me out I'm gonna have to stand up again I can't do this seated okay I'm gonna hold it here for a second while the glue sets up you're moving. Oh, Arizona, wow, maybe. That'd be awesome. Okay, that's it. There's our finished card. I'm gonna now, you guys know, I'm gonna have to now make one with this, of course. <laughs> Isn't that pretty? And I love the tone on tone, kind of the green one here. Perfect for spring. It just feels like such a spring green happy card. And I love that ink swiping technique, so fun. I hope you guys enjoyed seeing that process. I'm gonna turn the camera away from my work surface and back to my face here. Just give me a second. It's gonna go black just for a second, so hang tight. What glue did I use? I will tell you in a second. I will tell you. Hold on one second. Let me turn it back to my face. I am using a stay camera. Um, where is my glue? I'm using barely art glue, precision glue. Really like it. It's um, 
you can refill it so it allows you to be a little bit more green, which I like a lot. And it's a good glue. I'm sitting on my water media mat. When I'm done with something, I'll throw it behind me. I hope you guys enjoyed um, today's live and don't forget to check out the challenge that we have. It's the theme is leaves or greenery. And um, I hope you guys enter because we're giving, we're giving away gift certificates and we're going to be doing this weekly challenge now, um, weekly. <laughs> and every week we'll have a new challenge, new challenge, and we'll have a new challenge team. This, uh, this week, my challenge team is knocking it out of the park. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Tiffany and Daniel, they're making some amazing creations and sharing, um, the challenge information everywhere on IG, on, on Facebook as well. But every week we'll have a different challenge team with different inspiration uh, as well as of course a different theme. So make sure you're stopping in at our Facebook garden group to find out what our challenge is and see all the inspiration. We, with the challenge team, they're gonna be doing, each week they'll be doing things a little bit differently. So you definitely wanna check out and see what fun things they're gonna be doing because different team, different way to do it. But uh, always we'll have three places to enter your your submissions. You can enter on Facebook, your creations. You can submit your creations on our website. We have a challenge kind of tab on our website and then also on IG, on Instagram as well. So lots of places to enter your projects. And every time you enter, it's an opportunity to win uh, one of the gift certificates. Thank you so much for joining me today, guys. I hope you enjoyed creating that project and learning that fun ink, ink swiping technique. And if you're watching it on the replay, I hope you enjoyed it as well. And I will see you guys. I'm gonna be doing a live um, on Friday on Instagram. So if you wanna check that out, we'll be doing a different project. I'm really excited about it. So I hope I'll see you guys then. Bye everyone. Thank you for joining me.